Hey everybody, Matt Maynard here, and today I'm going to be talking about sibling rivalry and the escalating conflicts that I'm sure you're experiencing between two of your kids, and it seems like every time you turn around, they're getting into it, okay? And you have no idea what to do. You've gone in and you've tried to punish both of them. You've gone in and you've tried to punish the one that's more physically violent. You've gone in and told the older one that they need to like be a better role model. You're exhausted and you have no idea what to do. And so ultimately, I'm going to go through a strategy that I use with all of my clients to nip this in the bud because ultimately, it does not really matter what the conflict is at all. I know that sounds totally insane. It does not matter who started it, what started it, because right now, I promise you, you're playing one of these four roles, right? The judge, the jury, the executioner, or the mediator, right? And when you go into your kids fighting, right? You go into a situation, maybe they're physically getting into an altercation, you pull them apart and you start asking questions. Hey, what, what happened here? What's going on? What are you guys doing? And ultimately you start asking questions to try and understand who was more in the wrong, who started it, why it started in the first place. Was it even reasonable to get started in the first place? And you start gathering all this data and what winds up happening more often than not is you align with one child over the other. And you can imagine that that does not go over for the kid that doesn't get aligned with, right? They're usually then blaming the other one. And ultimately, the real problem is, is both of your kids in these situations aren't taking any sort of personal responsibility for their participation in the problem. The way that I think about sibling rivalry is no different than road rage. It doesn't really matter who started it. It's the fact that both people continue to participate in escalating it. and neither one of them are actually realizing or recognizing ways in which they need to take back control of themselves instead of constantly using the other one to rationalize and justify their poor decision making. Because the core goal of every parent that I work with is, is we're trying to actually get your kids to take radical ownership of their choices in their decision making. And ultimately in this pattern, you're actually setting them up to blame one another in order to get you to align with them. Because if they can make a case that the other one is worse than they are, then ultimately they run the, they run the chance that just maybe you might side with them and get the other one in trouble. And then you can imagine that if you align with say one parent over the other, right, maybe because they're younger or they're smaller, or they're uh, a different gender, or they have different limitations. Maybe they have executive functioning, they have ADHD, they have behavioral issues, whatever the problem is, whatever the reason is that you're aligning with the other one, I can tell you this other kid is gonna get their comeuppance. It's not gonna happen right now. I mean, it could. I've seen plenty of kids that'll, in that moment, when you start aligning with the other one, they'll go after, the, they'll go after that kid right in the moment. But more often than not, they know, okay, I'm already in trouble, I'm already screwed. I'm going to wait and I'm going to come back and I'm going to get this kid later. I'm going to get my brother or sister later. And ultimately, the feedback loop starts over again. That's why there's this recurring, never-ending nightmare. And ultimately, here's the other problem. Whatever, the, whatever kid you aligned with didn't actually take away from the situation what they could actually do differently next time so that they don't actually find themselves in this predicament. And so instead, what I'm going to have you do is instead of playing judge, jury, and executioner, I want you to act as a reflector, okay? I want you to ask reflective questions for each of your children equally, regardless of the content, regardless of the dynamic, regardless of whatever the problem was that actually happened. None of that is really relevant because the real goal of what I'm trying to help you see and what I think you're really trying to accomplish at its core is you're trying to help each of your kids take responsibility for themselves, right? We're trying to take and get them to take responsibility for themselves because they can't control the other one, right? We can only control ourselves. We can't control other people. We can only control our reactions to other people. And this is a vitally important lesson that not a lot of kids learn because of this pattern. And so instead, what you're going to do is you're going to come in and you're going to first all, you're going to first all identify, are they being physical? Because if they are, you're going to break it up. We don't want anybody getting hurt, right? So obviously you're going to break them up. And if they're just being verbally aggressive or they're just, you hear the conflict escalating, ask them, hey guys, do you need me to come in there and help you? And ultimately, more often than not, one of them will say yes. And when you go in, you're gonna say, okay guys, listen, they're gonna start, oh, she did this and he did that, blah, 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 blah. And they're gonna give you all this content, all these details, all of this stuff is irrelevant. And ultimately what you wanna say is, you wanna just start with one of them. Just say, hey, listen, 
I, I'm not really interested in understanding what really went down. I, my only goal is that you guys are actually taking feedback for what you can do differently here because ultimately I, I'm not going to keep coming in and arbitrating this nightmare that you guys continue to find yourselves in because it's not really our problem. It's your problem. And that's, that's a nice boundary right there. Okay, so that's the first thing you're going to say. So you're going to start off with one child and you're going to say, hey, listen, what can you, what did you do in this situation with your sibling to actually escalate this conflict? And ultimately, inevitably, they'll say, but he did, and they did, and you're going to say, no, 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 I'm going to get to them in a minute. Okay, that's, I'm, I know, I hear you, I'm going to address those things, and I'm going to talk to them about that in a minute. I want you to actually talk to me about what you did, what choices you made. And ultimately, more often than not, when you first do it, start doing this, they're not going to answer that question. They're just going to keep blaming the other one because they want to take you back to this old pattern, which is a nightmare, which loops you in even more, right? Okay. So ultimately, you're going to say, okay, you're not ready to answer that question. I'm going to go on to you. And ultimately, you're going to ask the same question to the other child. And they're going to blame the other one. And then ultimately, what I think you need to do at this point is if the, neither one of them can actually answer these questions, or if only one of them can answer these questions, what you want to then do is say, hey, listen, you guys need a few more minutes to actually think about what you can do differently here next time so that this doesn't escalate. Because from this point forward, I'm not going to be holding the other one accountable for what they did or didn't do or should have done or could have done. I'm holding you accountable to what you chose to do that is your responsibility. Okay, you're going after them individually, regardless of the content, because they both have to learn how to manage themselves when other people are going to be in high conflict or when there is going to be a conflict. They have to make different decisions so it doesn't escalate for themselves. Okay, so give them a few minutes. Okay, more often than not, they'll start fighting again. You're going to come back in and you're going to say, okay, so what have you guys come up with? Have you actually been able to do this? And inevitably, more often than not, they're not going to be able to come up with anything. And you're going to say, okay, well, listen, you're going to face a consequence because you can't actually reflect and you can't actually figure out what you're going to do differently here. So we'll talk later. And then you're going to move on to the other child and the other child's going to go, oh, God, like they're actually, they're being held accountable and they're facing a consequence for not actually thinking about what they can do. More often than not, that other child's going to go, um, let me think, I, I'm going to, more often than not, you've now set an example but that child may say, ah, blah, 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 and they might keep going in the same direction. If they do that, you're going to hold both of them accountable. Ultimately, your goal is to rinse, wash, repeat this over and over and over again until they are going to start to implement and come up with their own strategies. And the consequences for any sort of conflict that they get into aren't around the conflict. It's about them not taking responsibility for what they can choose to do differently next time so that this doesn't keep happening to them. They don't keep having these arguments and these conflicts with their brother or sister. Does that make sense? And so ultimately, you're now becoming the reflector rather than the judge, jury, executioner, or mediator. Okay? Now, inevitably, this is not going to work initially. So don't expect miracles right away. This is a pattern shift, a substantial pattern shift. Like this is a very big pattern shift because they're so accustomed to parents and you coming in over and over and over again that they're going to want to drag you back into this process. Every bone in your body is going to want to go back to this process because you're going to think it's easier. And initially it probably will be easier because the conflict will go down right away. However, it's just going to keep popping up and you're going to be in the feedback loop that you're in right now, which is why you're watching this video. So my recommendation is to really stick to those questions, you know, what can you do differently next time so that ultimately you don't contribute to the problem escalating? And if, listen, if you can't come up with a strategy and you're not going to actually implement that, then I'm going to hold you accountable to your choices independently. All right. So I hope this video is helpful. If you know anybody that would benefit from seeing this, please share it and pass it along. Uh, and if you want other helpful tips and videos, please check out my YouTube channel at Matthew Maynard LMFT. Thank you and have a great day.